Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Dana, and welcome to my home in Pasadena. Come on inside. Let's give you a tour. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. Hi, I'm Dana Banta, and I am the owner of the Monogrammed Home in San Marino. Here we are at my home in Pasadena, California. We bought this house in 2013, 11 years ago, while living in New York. We had dreams of moving back to Pasadena to start a family. And I flew out as soon as this house was listed, saw it, FaceTimed my husband, and uh, put an offer in on the house. We are one of 13 offers, and a week later, it was ours. When we were living in New York, there were a, a couple different neighborhoods that we were interested in moving to, but Madison Heights was our ultimate favorite. It's best known for Father of the Bride, as well as Mad Men, which are both shot a block away from our house. It's a great uh, neighborhood that we love. So our house is a traditional colonial style house. There are craftsman elements which is very common in houses in Pasadena area. We bought the house and it was 2,500 square feet and we added 600 square feet recently to the house. Here we are in our formal living room. You walk directly in through the front door into the formal living room. We have a beautiful alcove ceiling that's original to the home. We added the molding detail to the roof to create a little more depth to the ceiling. On either side of the front door, we have uh, these antique mirrors that flank the door. They were my great grandmother's, passed through my maternal side down to me. So what I love about the living room is the variety of fabrics that we use and colors. The celadon green, the coral, the blue that you'll see carry throughout the entire house. I love the Carlton V fabric that we chose, the dragon print. We mixed it with traditional fabric as well as more contemporary fabric to give it um, a modern yet traditional feel. Love coffee table books. I always love adding them, rearranging them to my table, adding pieces that I've picked up along my travel here and there. Games are a big family favorite for us. So we love playing games, whether it's Rummy Cube or Mexican Train or Gin or um, the latest that we've gotten into is Mahjong. And so it was really important that we add a game table to our formal living room. Uh, so we have this beautiful game table, Mahjong set up, and uh, I love this animal print chairs. These chairs were made from an oak tree that came down um, about 12 years ago in Pasadena over on Orange Grove. And the oak tree was salvaged and repurposed into these beautiful uh, chairs which I love. I think what I love most about our home is it's comfortable. It's inviting. We love to entertain. We love to have people over, whether it's families or friends. Our children love having company over. And I think it's a house that works well for all ages. I never want people to feel like they can't put their glass of wine down on a table or things are too formal. And so I think when designing our house and choosing the fabrics and everything, we thought about our life and what makes us happy, and that's friends and family and entertaining them in our home. So that was a goal with all of the rooms. What I love so much is that all of the rooms flow nicely together and the elements and colors of one room flow nicely into that of another. And you'll see when we do the tour, there's areas of the house where we kind of have bookends of saturated color and that was intentional as well. So for a few months now, I've been looking for a piece to add to the coffee table. 
and um, I wanted something that was more contemporary and modern. It was inspired by the two pillows that we have on the sofa, and I wanted something with movement to bring in the blues, and so I had this idea and vision that I wanted something glass related, and I went um, to the Geary's um, sale in Beverly Hills uh, a month back, and lo and behold, there at the sale was this awesome hand-blown glass ball, which I think works perfectly in this room and complements the pillows. So um, I love this. I, I brought it home, and my husband, the first thing he said, what on earth is that? That is not us. And I said, no, I think it's fun. It's the unexpected, you know? You're, you walk into our home, and you expect that so much of it will be traditional. Um, and I just a love adding a, a, a pop of something contemporary that people um, don't necessarily expect to see. So this fireplace, when we bought the house, it had these Corinthian style columns on either side of it. Um, this whole room was a sponge painted pink, if you can imagine that. And we really transformed it with the wallpaper. We wanted to bring the house back to that 1922 traditional colonial style. So we added all the molding. I wanted to do paneling to give it that old traditional feel. We added ginger jars, which I have an obsession with. So you'll see those throughout the house. And then also brass candlesticks. I love collecting brass candlesticks. I think that they're so much fun for entertaining, putting around your house, you know, you can really, uh, they're versatile in all rooms and for all occasions. To complement the use of fabric in this room, we decided to mix contemporary art as well as traditional art. Right here we have a painting by Johnny Apodaca, who is based in Carmel. A lot of our artwork in the house you will see is from Carmel Plain Air Art. Not your typical what you might find in a formal living room in a traditional style house, but what I love about this painting is it works so well with the colors of the fabric. You see the red and the coral in it, and then also it complements a more traditional British portrait that we have in the room as well. So over here we have traditional British portrait. This has been in our family for three generations. And about 11 years ago, I had it restored. And before I had it restored, you couldn't even see the gentleman's pinky ring down here. You couldn't see the lace detail in the sleeves. And so we had it restored. And I think I just love the red color and the boldness in it. Because it is such a big piece, we intentionally decided to leave some of the walls blank in here and so to give it the pomp and circumstance that it deserves. The floors of the house are original. The technique that is used is called quarter saw. So they're thinner slats of wood and they were original to the house. We had them refinished when we moved in. All of the bedrooms and the bedroom hallway were carpeted uh, when we bought the house and we weren't sure if we were going to uncover um, original hardwood floor or what would be underneath. But we, when we first moved in, uh, the first thing we did was rip out all of the carpeting and we uncovered original oak hardwood floors. So when we did our remodel, uh, one of the important points that we wanted to um, uh, do was uh, create a more formal living room. So before you used to walk from the kitchen through the living room to the bedrooms. Uh, to the bedroom hallway. And we wanted a more formal area that wasn't a main thoroughfare. So we closed off, we had a doorway uh, right here to the kitchen. We had a doorway over here to the bedrooms. We completely closed those. And this was our door to the exterior, to our backyard. Um, and so it was big glass door. And then on either side, it was flanked by colonial French doors. So we decided to add this hallway onto the back of the house and create a really show-stopping hallway that connects the kitchen to the uh, bedroom hallway. In this room, we added a pair of Gustavian Demi Loon tables that we found in Round Top in Texas. And I love the color, the feel. I came into this house and this project with so much wood antiques. And so I think that these tables um, are a great addition. They add light to the room. And then I paired with blue and white pieces that I've picked up. So I would say an antique collector as well as blue and white porcelain pieces. Other thing I love about this hallway and I think makes it a showstopper is the black and white checkerboard that we put down in here. So 
When we were selecting the stone, it was really important to me that it not be a dark black, but more of a gray. And so we searched high and low and found it. And then the other thing that I wanna point out is we were deciding on grout color and decided that this would be a main thoroughfare um, for our children, for pets, for um, family and friends and, and entertaining. And so we decided to go with a darker grout color so it wouldn't look um, dirty over time. So these are our dining room chairs and we have 12 of them. So, you know, depending on a party or what entertaining needs we have, we move them in and out. So sometimes they'll be in here. Other times they'll be in our dining room. We've used them outside before. Every once in a while, I'll stack books on top of them to create a vignette too. So I think they're really fun. You can add them to the living room. What I like about them so much is the, the fabric works in all the rooms of our house. So you can, you can really mix and match however, wherever you need more seating, um, they can move. So we wanted to add a pair of doors onto the hallway to block it off from the bedroom hallway. Um, just uh, create a more formal um, gathering space for entertaining. Um, if the kids are sleeping, uh, then the doors help with the noise. Um, also great for Christmas morning. So we painted these doors, the Celadon green, to coordinate and match with the wallpaper of the living room. So I lived in New York for eight years after college. I worked in marketing for Sephora. I did all the store marketing for openings and events. And my sister and I always had the desire to move back to Pasadena and open a retail store together. And we wanted to do something that was different and didn't exist in the Pasadena area. Home stores existed. We loved the idea of a home store, but wanted something a little more unique. And so we landed on a monogramming personalization gift store, the Monogrammed Home, which we opened 10 years ago. Our goal was to create a curated selection of products that worked for men, women, the home, baby, children. And to us, that personal unique touch of a monogram or name on an item just shows that extra effort that you've put in for your gift. And so we created a brick and mortar location um, in San Marino and we have an online presence as well. So people ask all the time, they say, oh my gosh, your whole house must be monogrammed. That's amazing. I would love to have my whole house monogrammed. And in fact, I think you'd be pretty surprised if you came over. There are subtle monograms, but they're not all over. And I don't know if that's that I look at monograms all day long in the store, but I think it's, you don't want to overdo it, but I think adding those unique subtle touches really uh, go a long way. Right off of our formal living room, we have our library, which is um, the most warm, inviting room and a fan favorite of our guests and friends. We used a very saturated teal color in the room. What I love about this room is the light. Whether it's first thing in the morning or in the um, late afternoon, the light in this room is very inviting. We added this wet bar before this was the family's family room. And so they had a TV back here with accordion doors, their washer dryer behind it, and it just didn't speak to us. Because we love to entertain, we wanted to add a wet bar to the area. So we added this wet bar and we added the bookshelves to display some of our books, pictures, memorabilia, and things that we've picked up. I love Staffordshire dogs as well, so I've collected those and have a pair here. And then we have items like this was my husband's grandfather's trophy from a bowling championship, which I think is really fun to display around the house. My husband loves bourbon, and, um, and so we've decanted it throughout the house. Um, we picked up this pair of 1960 um, decanters uh, from William Wayne in New York when we were living in the city after getting married. I love them in this room. They add a little art deco kind of feel to the room, contemporary yet traditional as well. In addition, these prints I found in a local store down in San Marino. And I thought they were, they were fun and regal. I loved the bear in here. It reminded me of the California State Bear. Um, and so we had them framed um, to create a more formal piece of artwork in the room. 
So my maternal grandmother uh, was very into equestrian. She loved paintings of horses, and uh, I was fortunate to uh, inherit some of those pieces. So on either side of the sofa, we have um, these two paintings from the races. And then over here on the left side of the window, we have two more uh, pieces. These pieces hung in our house growing up. My sister has another set of them and then I have this set. So what I love about them is the wood frame on them and they're very traditional and they remind me of the memories of growing up in our home. So the rug, we selected the colors. It was custom hand loomed in India to complement the living room as well as the other, um, the teal color of the, uh, the walls and the blue of the sofa. Again, we went with a more contemporary feel for the, for the pillows in here. But then again, we mixed it with a needlepoint pillow. This needlepoint pillow was needlepointed for my mom as a wedding gift back in 1980. And then of course we have a monogrammed throw. So in this room, as well as in the dining room, we wanted to lighten, uh, lighten the tone um, and create white window treatments, but then add the navy and cream colored trim to it to tie in with the rug and the sofa and the walls. It's so funny. So this is everyone's favorite room in the house. I think it's a combination of the paint color, the warmth of the fabrics, the rug that we selected, the light that comes in. It gets phenomenal morning light. It gets phenomenal afternoon light, but it seems to be everyone's favorite room. Here we are in our dining room. For this room, we chose Faro and Ball ring walled wallpaper in this saturated coral color. What I like about this is we've toned it down. It works really nicely with the uh, window treatments that we had. Again, that French blue that I love so much. Other great thing about this wallpaper is it works all season, all year round for any season. So whether it's Christmas or the spring, you can really change your tablescape to complement the wallpaper. So I think so many times people shy away from color and, and think, oh, well, if I put that, um, this wallpaper in my dining room, it'll be too polarizing. And how would I set a table? But really, I think you can do anything um, with this wallpaper. So here I have a spring table set up. I am typically not one who gravitates towards the color purple, but lilac is in season now. And I just had this thought to take this beautiful hand blown um, in Los Angeles glass vase uh, and pair it with lilac. I leaned into the purple for this tablescape. I used a purple charger and then also paired it with these beautiful Sfera linen napkins from the monogram tome in Pansy is the color. And I did a tone on tone monogram, which I really like. And I think it's sophisticated and timeless and can really go, it's very versatile for any table that you set. So we selected this beautiful glass and brass chandelier for the room. I think it's a, a statement piece. What I like about it so much is it's contemporary, but it still it feels sophisticated and, uh, and, and really goes with whatever the table is here. This china cabinet is built in. It's original to the house, so from 1922, when we were doing our remodel of it. On the back side, you can see that the original architect of the house signed the back side of that, which I think is really neat. And we had our contractor sign, um, sign it as well. So one day, you know, a hundred years from now, when they go to remodel this house, they'll find uh, everyone's um, mark on it. So I um, love collecting ginger jars, blue and white pieces from my travels, from local antique shops around town. And I just wanted to show you some of my favorites. So these belonged to my grandmother. And I remember from a little, being a little kid and them always being on display in her dining room. So I'm fortunate enough to have them on display in here. I've paired them with a mix of ginger jars, plates behind them. Um, I love these um, monkey candlesticks that I found. I think it's really neat to mix old and new together. So obviously this is new, but it lightens the tone with the old uh, ginger jars and plates. So 
So our dining room transitions into a butler's pantry. So this is what I call the jewel box of the house. I wanted to create a place to display all of my barware, glassware, china, and I think we accomplished it in this room. So for uh, this cabinet, we went with a high gloss. We did old blue jeans by Benjamin Moore. We paired it with unlacquered brass hardware to give it that jewel, glossy, um, rich, textured feeling. We love to collect matches. Anywhere along our travels, New York, Europe, Florida, California, anywhere we've been, we've collected matches and we keep them in here. And then we also have a bowl here of personalized matches with my husband's initials on it. So it's always a fun kind of thing. Um, we love when friends come over and they take them and then they add them to their collections in their homes. So because I'm such a collector, my latest obsession in collecting are William Yoward martini glasses. And so I think it's always fun to have a mix. Don't buy six or eight or 10 of the same martini glass. Mix it up, have fun with it. Uh, so I have here uh, a collection of our martini glasses, uh, ones with palm trees. We have floral here. Uh, we have a more coupe style glass. Um, and then also, I think this is a, a just such a fun uh, contemporary martini glass. So the other great thing about collecting and having a variety of glassware is if you're the guest at someone's house and you can't remember whose drink is which, at least you, you should be able to remember the shape that you're given. So I think it, it's a conversation piece. In our remodel, it was important to us to add a formal powder bathroom for our guests to use. And so we added this little hidden gem inside the pantry. We selected Brunswick and Fee Pagoda Chinoiserie style wallpaper in here. It's a very small space, but I think the wallpaper makes it feel larger than it really is. Also important for us was we couldn't find a vanity that fit the space well. They were too small, not too deep. And so what we did was create a marble countertop wall to wall that would allow us the opportunity to add a candle and flowers and paper guest towels to the sink. So moving out of the butler's pantry, we are now entering the kitchen. This was new and is part of the remodel. When we bought the house 11 years ago, the kitchen hadn't been touched since 92. So we walked into a 1990s ski chalet. We had green tile countertops. We had a maple colored cabinetry and we knew that we wanted to change the kitchen, but we didn't know exactly how we wanted to change the kitchen, what our life would look like living in this house. So it's really important to us that we live in the house um, and get a feel for the flow and what our daily life was like and routine with two children. After several years, we figured it out and we wanted to create a space that was light and comfortable, um, a gathering spot, um, but that opened into a family room too. So we selected leathered black quartzite countertops for the island. My mom has something similar uh, to this and we just loved um, the, the statement that it made in, in the room. It also pairs really nicely into the hallway that has the black and white checkerboard uh, tile as well. Above our island, we have these two pendant lights. They were custom made with this blue and white geometric fabric. And I just love the way they showcase the island. The other thing that I love about this room is I always wanted to have a coffered ceiling in the kitchen. And I think we have accomplished it really well in here. We've added a lot of molding, a lot of detail around each of the beams, as well as around the hood of the uh, stove. So I love appliances. I love having a desk in my kitchen, but what I don't love is clutter. And so it was really important to me that we create um, pocket doors on our appliance garage to hide clutter and whatnot. So behind these pocket doors, we have our toaster oven, our KitchenAid mixer, cookbooks. What I love is that you can hide all your appliances behind these doors. In our kitchen, we wanted to have a desk space, a, a family computer, uh, for the kids to use to do their homework, um, but then in an area where we would be present. And so 
Behind these pocket doors, we created a desk. We know that desks can start to look a little messy over time. And so I really wanted a space that we could hide, um, but that was in the kitchen where we spend so much of our time. So we have two children and I wanted an island where our children could sit at. If they each have a friend for a play date, they could sit at the island, they could enjoy a snack here and time together. I love having the sink on the island and the chairs here because it creates a conversation. So if I'm here doing the dishes or I'm making a snack and the kids are sitting here, it's easy to have a conversation um, and ask them about their day or what they're up to um, and be engaged with them. So in our kitchen and several of the other rooms in our house, we don't have a lot of wall space to hang art. And so what I've decided to do instead is prop pieces of plain air art up against the wall and create kind of a vignette, use the butter dish in front of it, um, and really draw your attention to that artwork. So our kitchen transitions really nicely into our family room. Um, we wanted more of an open feel, contemporary feeling and space to enjoy each other's company here. So you can see that in the front of the house, we have our formal rooms. And then back here, we go into more contemporary open plan. We did a vaulted ceiling to really open up the space and create a lot of light in the room. What I also love about this is it feels like two separate rooms. Um, but they work so nicely together. And so I can be in the kitchen cooking or doing work and the kids can be here playing a game or watching TV and we can have a conversation. And so it's really nice to have an open space where um, we're, we're all together, yet we all have our own individual areas. So this chair belonged to my husband's great grandfather and it is the most comfortable chair you will ever sit in. We had it reupholstered um, in this beautiful Oscar de la Renta fabric, um, which really created um, the basis of all the fabrics that we chose for this room. So um, again, you'll see the green and the blue and the coral, and we just went a little more muted with those colors in here, but continued that story from the living room into our family room. So as you can imagine, having two kids, this being our main um, area for watching TV, um, this is a high traffic seating area. So we recovered the sofa in a perennial fabric, which is a great performance fabric, and did this beautiful uh, cornflower blue color, which I just absolutely adore. My personal favorite room, I would say, is our new family room, which is an addition that we just completed. I love the fabrics that we selected in there. The space is very comfortable, yet sophisticated, I would say. So my kids enjoy watching TV there and are comfortable, but it's a great space that we can entertain in and really, um, you know, dress up for, for parties and whatnot. So when we were living in New York, we collected a lot of Jonathan Adler pieces and we bought a pair of these chinoiserie lime green chairs while living in New York. And we had them in the garage and I figured, why not use them? Why not add a pop of color? You know, bring in, bring in the green, but bring it in in a different hue. And so we reupholstered them and brought in the fabric that we have over on the banquette pillows to kind of create more of a contemporary fun feel in this room. We added this side table. It is a rattan side table. We love the beach and spending time um, in New Jersey in the summers and going up to Carmel. And so I wanted to incorporate kind of beachy rattan feels into the house. And um, I think this side table does a, a great job with that as well as the side tables on flanking the sofa. So these pieces here are all by an artist, Alicia Maheen, who's based in Carmel as well, um, plain, a very well-known plain air artist. And this is a scene of a farmer's market in the Monterey Bay area. Why I think the chairs work so well in this room too is they reflect the lime green of the umbrella too. And so there's that connection to the chair as well. So one of our favorite things to do as a family is collect sea glass. Um, the kid, our kids love collecting sea glass just as much as we do. And um, so we have this jar here of, um, of the pieces that we've collected from all throughout the world. So uh, 
Last year we went to Panama um, and we found um, this island that was covered in sea glass. And so we found huge, big chunks of every amazing color. Um, and I think it's colors like this that have inspired our house as well. And so wherever we go, whether it's Panama, um, up the coast of California to New Jersey, um, we have collected sea glass and we've added it um, to this jar to create a story for our family. So this is the, um, the dining area in our family room. Um, we added a built-in banquette over here. We laminated the fabric um, because primarily the children eat on the banquette. Um, and we wanted a um, easy, wipeable space that would preserve the fabric and still look elegant. We added oversized pillows onto the banquette to create a fun feel and really showcase the beautiful fabric. I love entertaining. I love mixing and matching china, doing the unexpected. So this is our formal china, and I think it's really fun. I think it's important to choose china that you gravitate towards, because then you're more likely to use it. So I'm not one for um, plain white or ivory with gold and um, detail to it. I like something fun, a pop of color. Um, as I mentioned, we love the beach so much. And so incorporating the coral into this um, uh, china um, is fun and it adds a smile to your face. So I love the idea of mixing and matching. You can do um, blue and white pieces with stars on it. And it m matches really nicely with the coral. Um, I love mixing um, patterns too. So with this uh, striped tablecloth, I thought it'd be really fun to mix it up with the monogram and do more of a circular monogram style to show the juxtaposition of shapes. So these X benches were with us in New York as well. And um, we had them in our apartment there and we reupholstered them to provide extra seating for this room. So oftentimes we'll have um, families over for dinner uh, and we need extra seating for kids. So these are easy, super easy to pull in and out stools that can be used in this space. We can uh, use them over in our family room. Um, you can really move them throughout the house. And so it, it's really important to me when um, designing our house that we use versatile pieces that we could mix and match in other rooms and whatnot um, to work and accommodate um, our guests. So because we live in Southern California and it's usually sunny year round and, and we can entertain and be outside so much of the year, it was really important to me that we um, have doors um, that open to the outside, to the exterior um, and create an inviting space. So we flanked either side of the banquette uh, with two doors that easily access uh, the exterior patio. So living in Southern California, we do a lot of outdoor entertaining, and we wanted this patio to be an extension of our home. You know, another dining room, if you will. We added on the majority of the east side of our house, right here to my right, and, um, and so we wanted with the two sides to create this intimate feeling dining room that was kind of another extension of the house and a room in and of its own. And so we went with a table to seat eight that really helps to lengthen the area. We also created a outdoor uh, living room feel over here that opens up to the backyard so that you could see the variety of green foliage that we have and the layers that we created of greenery. This area is completely redone. So our goal was to make it look like it was traditional to the home. So Prior, when we purchased the house, this was a cement pad um, and it had been cracked and broken and layered and it was kind of a hodgepodge. And so what we did is we added the brick to the patio. We went with a traditional basket weave pattern to stay true to a colonial style house. My husband and I went um, and hand selected uh, all of the brick that we used at the house. All of the brick came from uh, demoed buildings in downtown LA, which is really neat to keep with the Los Angeles area and the history and the culture of um, our community. 
So I've always wanted to have a climbing jasmine trellis. And so in this, we had this wall and it seemed a little stark to be solid white. And so I wanted to create an element of detail. Um, our master bedroom is directly across from it. So when you're in bed, it's really nice to like look out and see, um, see greenery. And so we created this beautiful trellis. Uh, we added impatience along the bottom. Um, this, this is a Mexican lime tree, which is really great for um, tequila cocktails. Um, and then we added rosemary along the bottom of it. So it's really important when we were doing our home and our garden, um, we stuck with the green and white color palette and we tried to use it in um, different, um, different plants and different flowers, um, but stick with that green and white feel and add depth um, with different um, plants. When we bought the house, the privet hedge here existed, the taller hedge in the back, but we wanted to add more detail, more layers, um, create variety. So we added the variegated mock orange as our second green and white uh, layer. And then we did um, a, a dwarf pittosporum in the front to create more of a rounded hedge, um, creating that depth. At night, it's really nice. We have um, up lighting um, that lights, um, lights the hedge. And so you can get those greens and whites and silvers. Um, and I just love the way that we did the light um, to really showcase the foliage. Um, the other thing that I love is we have a down light in our oak tree that shines down. And so at night in the evenings, when you look down at the grass, you see the silhouette of the tree, of the beautiful oak tree that's been here probably since the house was built. So in the garden, I wanted to use citrus. Um, things that we would use in our everyday cooking um, or needs. So as you can see, we have a lot of potted citrus around. Um, we have it right here. And at the base of the potted citrus, I added oregano. It's a great ground covering. And then also, as you know, a very useful spice. In here, I created this um, uh, trough um, for vegetables. And so we have carrots and cilantro, rosemary, dill, sage, parsley, thyme whole bunch of different um, herbs that we use in our everyday cooking that I thought, why not grow um, in our own backyard? I think what makes a home come alive is the interior design and the pieces that you select along your journey in life to add to your home. So whether it's a piece that you found traveling to Europe or you went to the uh, Rose Bowl flea market, and picked up a piece, or you shopped at the monogrammed home and got cocktail napkins. You know, I think it's finding those pieces throughout your life journey and what gravitates to you that you fill your home with that gives it uh, soul. The word home to me means a place where you gather with your family, with friends, a place where you come together and get to experience and enjoy one another's company. I think the pieces that you pick up along your travels and life journey uh, really add to your home and make it a home versus a house. It's the warmth of fabrics, it's the warmth of the people in it. It's telling a story about your life and not just filling a space with furniture um, to enjoy. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.